the Red Bull X Alps. It's the world's toughest adventure race and now in its eighth edition. Starting in Salzburg, Austria, 31 athletes from 20 countries will race a straight line distance of 1,138 kilometers across the Alps to Monaco via seven turn points in seven different countries. It's a personal adventure, not just a race. I want to go in uh, Monaco. After, if I'm uh, first or last, uh, it's not a problem. I want just to arrive to Monaco. Just like Swiss athlete Christian Kriegel Maurer, who has won four times in a row. But let's see if he can do it again in 2017. My goal is ganz klar, a cool Abenteuer to learn. It's about having a cool adventure, and I hope this is a new chapter that is exciting and pushes me further. But from the sporting side, I want to get to Monaco. I want to arrive there and to win the race for a fifth time. Let's see what will happen. Before the main event, the one-day Leatherman Prologue takes place in Salzburger land. It would normally be a hike and fly battle, but this year organizers cancel all flying. Conditions are not safe for launching from the top of the Zwölferhorn. This means athletes will tag the turn point on foot and then run back down to finish in Fujil Amze. Sebastian Huber, Aaron Duragati, and Benoit Uters, the top three finishers, each win an additional Lead Lenser Night Pass, which will allow them to race through the mandatory rest period. The day two start of the main race will also be staggered to reflect performances at the Leatherman Prologue. For every athlete, the time they finish behind the winner is added onto their 5 a.m. start time. Kriegel Mara watches from the sidelines. He did not participate this year at the Leatherman Prologue due to illness. Let's see how this affects his chances. The start at Salzburg's Mozartplatz and everyone is extremely focused. It's a time for last minute preparations before the 14 day adventure race begins. The countdown is on and the 2017 Red Bull X Alps begins. The world's toughest adventure race will see athletes attempt to hike and fly from the historic city of Salzburg to Monaco via seven turn points. The first one is the 1288 meter summit of the Geisberg. And while conditions are atrocious, it hasn't dampened the enthusiasm of fans and athletes. In these conditions, flying from the top will almost certainly be impossible. Race director Christoph Weber has been tracking the weather. Well, the expectations for the day is that it's a real adventurous day. We are up here. I'm quite happy that there are spectators also. The weather for tomorrow looks much better and even for the day after it looks even better. And I think it's very important to get to the south side of the Alps because there we will find much better weather conditions for big flights. From the Geisberg, the route goes south across the Alps to Slovenia. Then it's back north to aschau Chiemsee in Germany, then southwest to Leermus in the Tiroler Zugspitz Arena, before crossing the Alps for a third time to Monte Baldo in Italy. Turn point six is the Matterhorn in Switzerland, and the last one is Pei, situated in the hills above Monaco. Athletes exchange Salzburg's cobbled streets for steep wooded trails, 
as they begin a very wet ascent. Sebastian Huber is the first to arrive in just over an hour and is crowned the Geisberg King. Next up is Romanian running legend Toma Cocanea. Then they come thick and fast. Kriegel Maurer, Aaron Duragati, Benoit Uterz. Then it's Paul Guschelbauer's turn to tag the turn point. Toma Kokonea, who is famous for his incredible running endurance, uses the conditions to his advantage and sets off at a blistering pace. Keen to repeat his success in 2011 when he came second. <laughs> Toma Kokonea, Sebastian Huber and Gavin McClurg each pull a lead lenser night pass, which allows them to hike through the night during the rest period. You know, we weren't going to use our night pass till the very end. We didn't want to use it during the race really at all. But, uh, you know, we felt like if we could make some ground now, it's going to really pay dividends. So we'll see. While these three hike into the night, the first day comes to an end for Kriegel Maurer, who finishes it, unusually for him, in the mid-pack. I am feeling healthy again. Maybe I'm not super well. I'm 95% fit, which, on this running track in the flat, it's good enough. But after 80 kilometers, my feet definitely know about it. I just hope that when they get on the mountain, they will recover. Toma Kokonea, unfazed by the bad weather, extends his lead by running through the night. No, Tommy. No. Go, go, go. Although the main field is still in Salzburgerland, as seen on live tracking, weather conditions are improving, meaning that for some athletes, reaching turn point two Triglav in Slovenia should be possible. But athletes have to be careful. The last 24 hours on foot have taken a heavy toll. Kriegel Maurer is on his way and looking for a launch site to get into the air, as well as Nick Neenans from New Zealand. Yeah, well, at the moment there's a bit of light rain. This couple of guys just flew off over here just to save uh, their legs, I guess, Ch mix it up a bit. And I'm looking at climbing over to the pass so I can fly up on the other side in the next valley. Kriegel reaches his site and attacks. They are not the best weather conditions, but they're good enough for him. After running non-stop for 24 hours to establish a 40 kilometer lead, Cochonair prepares to take off. But Maurer started earlier and quickly overtakes the Romanian athlete.
Kriegel is on his way to turn point two and will reach it after 30 hours from the start. He has an intuitive feeling for the wind and thermals. Aaron Duragatti from Italy will be looking to improve on his sixth place in the 2015 Red Bull X Alps. As a paragliding world champion and one of the world's top pilots, he's a genuine threat to Maurer. But he is struggling. The first day's punishing hike has left him with a knee problem that is getting worse every hour. He fights on step by step, but it's painfully slow progress. His only hope is to get into the air and do what he does best. It's an awkward launch with his injured leg, but he manages to get into the air. It's just as well, descending by foot would have been impossible. Elsewhere, the weather is not so good. Austrian athlete Paul Guschelbach has had a bad start. But at this stage of the race, that doesn't mean a thing. This is Guschelbauer's fourth time in the Red Bull X Alps, and twice he's come third. He searches for a launch site near the Grossglockner, Austria's highest mountain, but this is not the best decision. The weather turns quickly. The rivals are taking to the air. Guschelbauer sees Gaspard Petio and Nelson de Freyman both launch and does not want to fall behind. Petio started this race at the back. He finished last in the Leatherman prologue. But with this flight, he can bring himself into a top position. Guschelbauer is well known for his extreme feats flying in challenging conditions. He launches where others would not. Antoine Girard tries to start too, but it goes the other way for him. He fights to take off, but the wind is too strong and he lands badly, ending his race. Uh, now I feel good. I have to do an uh, operation, but uh, I hope uh, to have a good uh, feeling for uh, come back uh, maybe in two years. Race leader Kriegel Mara starts the day quietly and without stress. He is well known for his meticulous planning and professional approach. He hikes up to a launch site and gets airborne early, in conditions where others might have waited. Meanwhile, Gaspard Petio reaches turn point two Triglaf in second place. A remarkable change of fortune for the Frenchman. Oh, well, we feel uh, very happy from the day yesterday. And we have to be careful not to go, not to start too early. Others also seize the opportunity to go on the attack. Sebastian Huber and Gavin McClurg use the favourable weather to get airborne in a bid to reach turn point two in the air. Aaron Duragatti tries to keep his knee under control. But all that running at the start means hiking still hurts a lot. A good flying day can change everything, and he puts in a great performance to pass the second turn point. But it's all over for Austrian athlete Stefan Gruber, who retires with an ankle injury. 
Nah, the event itself is natürlich The event itself is a dream, sure. It was just extremely hard, especially at the beginning when the weather was so against us. Where really the cold and rain and was it was awful. And walking, walking, walking. It was a bit too much for my legs. But the event itself is great. After waiting for good conditions, Gaspar Petio now launches from Triglav. His mission? To make turn point three, Ashau Kimzi. I, I go for start, starting for, maybe it's, too, it's good day for fly. Toma Kokonea wants to fly as well, and conditions are good. Toma Kokonea is a Red Bull X Alps legend. The much loved 42 year old has taken part in every edition since the race started in 2003 and has been flying for over 25 years. He too launches but he's no longer the fastest guy in the air and he fails to keep up with Petio. Paul Guschelbauer launches from turn point two, but now the conditions are starting to get difficult. The skies are alive with paragliders. As the main group heads towards turn point two, Guschelbauer glides near the Gross Glockner towards turn point three, Ashal Kimsey. Ashau is a well-known climbing and paragliding hub, and there's quite the welcome party kicking off. All eyes are trained on the sky. Race leader Kriegel Mara is on the way. He lands after a great flying day, but is in no hurry to take off anytime soon. His 2017 race goal is to enjoy the experience more, and so he stops to talk to fans savor the moment and sign some autographs in some unlikely places. A new day begins, but it's not a good one for Mexican athlete David Liano Gonzalez, who is axed. Every 48 hours, the team in last place is eliminated. So for, for, uh, uh, having me here, uh, During the Leatherman prologue, where we had to run up and down uh, uh, that, that day we couldn't fly. Uh, I, I felt the injury come back. And then the first day of x uh, where we also couldn't uh, fly uh, because of the rain. So it was running up Geisberg and then running down and running the, the rest of the day. Uh, by that night, I knew I was in trouble. The day also starts badly for Aaron Duragati, whose struggle with injury is all too plain to see. Bravely, he fights on and takes to the sky. It's his only chance of staying in the game. Hot on his heels is the Czech athlete Stanislav Meyer and the chaser pack. Meyer is looking to improve on his 12th place finish in 2015, and so far it's looking good. Paul Guschelbar is also on the way to Ashau Kimsey and enjoys a great flight moving up through the rankings. In the Hochstein area, Paul Takats uses the favorable weather to get into a good position in the leading group of chaser athletes. But wind is coming from the west and it is getting difficult to fly the whole way. He is forced to land and continue on foot like the German athlete Manuel Nubel. Turn point Ashau Kimsey. Gaspard Petio lands the morning after Kriegel Maurer. Catching him is still a possibility for the quietly determined Frenchman, and he's soon on his way. And I know Kriegel was flying on the, on the more east, eastern route, and I knew I could maybe catch him on the left, but I was maybe one hour too late, and uh, the valley wind coming from the north was really strong. Do you think and you I, could? I couldn't overpass the, the, last, the last transition. While Petio makes his way to turn point four, athletes arrive one after another at Ashau Kimsey, Nelson de Freeman among them. His confidence remains strong, so is his determination to stay with the lead pack. I mean, at the X-Types, everything can change in one day. If you bomb out and after, you have to work, maybe 10 guys can 
cross above your head. So for now, I relax, I do my stuff. I just want to keep going crossing, you know, for, for cover some distance when the weather is good. We don't know if maybe in two, three days the rain is, is back. Hungarian Paul Takats and New Zealander Nick Neenan celebrate after landing at Ashal Kimzi and see a chance to step it up a gear. Gushelbauer also passes the turn point. Yeah, it's been a good time. I just landed after a few hours in the air. That's how it works. You have to land from time to time. Like here at the Aschau turn point. <laughs> For the legion of Tomokokanea fans, these are challenging times. He's fallen back in the rankings, seemingly unable to take the heat at the front. But if there's one man who knows how to suck it up, it's the Romanian. You're gonna arrive at the Asha today, you think? No, 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 no chance. It's too late. Ah. But it's not too late for German athlete Manuel Nubel, who arrives looking relaxed, clearly enjoying his Red Bull X Alps adventure. Sebastian Huber lands in Aschau Chiemsee next. It's home turf for him. From Aschau Chiemsee, the route heads southwest for 117 kilometers to Lermus in the Tiroler Zugspitz Arena. Kriegel Maurer arrives first, later claiming it was one of the most challenging flights of his career due to strong westerly winds. But he is aware of the Frenchman Gaspar Petio not far behind, and he seizes on the opportunity to keep moving and put some distance between them. The hike up here revealed that there is a good launch site. Now I should get up into the air and go further to Montebaldo. And this is exciting now. Maurer succeeds in taking off. It's potentially a deciding moment in the race if he can get within touching distance of turn point five Monte Baldo, 181 kilometers to the south. By late afternoon, he's in Italy. By nightfall, he's within 100 kilometers of the turn point. The Frenchman Gaspard Petio is next to land in Lermus, and he puts on a show for the crowds who've come to see him. His day is over. But Maurer doesn't let the darkness stop him, and he keeps pushing south. For Toma Kokonea, this is standard. He's used to running until the last possible moment. The lead athletes now look ahead to Italy, but Italian athlete Aaron Duragatti is not one of them. His race is finished. His knee injury leaves him no choice but to retire. Mm, I could uh, still somehow fight, but then probably uh, my injury will get worse and I will take really long to recovery. So yeah, yesterday evening I decided uh, to stop my race here. Maura is feeling the strain. He searches for a launch site. Petio has already found one. Uh, there might be a little inversion, so we'll go a little higher to take off. And I think we can fly really early, maybe in 35, 30 minutes. We'll take off like around 9, 30, 10. So it should be a great day. I hope I don't make a mistake in the air. At this stage, making the right decisions is crucial. A wrong turn or simple mistake can cost an athlete several places in the rankings, especially with so many athletes closely bunched together in the chaser group. Stanislav Meyer attempts to launch in difficult conditions. And for a moment, everyone holds their breath, but he recovers in time and takes to the air. With his big support team, Austrian athlete Paul Guschelbauer tries to take as professional approach to the race as possible. He waits for the right moment to launch. But when he does, he's deadly. Yeah. 
Nelson de Freeman did not get it so right and now finds himself experiencing every athlete's worst nightmare, being stuck on the ground like Nick Neenan's here fighting through pine trees while others pass overhead. Like fellow Frenchman Benoit Uterz. Manuel Nubel enjoys a spectacular landing in Leomus and the crowds are there to greet him. In the beginning we had a cold wind from the west, really cold, like yesterday. It was really awful because it was not possible to land in the valleys. You're the best. It's a great day for the Frenchmen Gaspar Petio and Benoit Uterz, who head towards the Monte Baldo turnpoint. By the end, Petio will have narrowed Maurer's lead to just 18 kilometers, while Uterz is starting to look threatening. And then there's the chaser pack, working closely together to move faster in the air. These athletes also look strong. If Maurer encounters bad weather and is grounded, this wolf pack could easily hunt him down in a matter of hours. The spectators gather at turn point five Monte Baldo, which sits above Lake Garda, ready to welcome Maurer. He doesn't manage to fly all the way there and is forced to hike the last few hundred meters to the top. He arrives at the turn point just after 4.30 p.m. and as the first athlete, wins the Saliva Trophy. There's time for just a quick photo and a few more autographs. <laughs> then he sets off across Lake Garda. His destination? The Swiss and French Alps. At the front, it's Mara who leads, while bringing up the rear at the back is Duncan Kutsi of South Africa. At 48, Canadian athlete Richard Brezina is the oldest athlete in the lineup, but he's still relatively new to paragliding. I, I, yeah, I, I still have to experience it fully, I think, but today while I was coming in, to, uh, gliding in towards the turn point, you know, going past the cliffs, I was thinking like, I can't believe that I just crossed the Alps back and forth twice and here I am gliding out into the plains and it's all part of this event and I, I think it's amazing. Having pulled a lead lens a night pass, Gaspard Petio makes it to turn point five after midnight. He's nervous about what lies ahead. But yes, the, 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 guard, the lake de Garda is really, really difficult place to fly. He has some rest and signs the turnpoint board in the early hours of the morning, some 12 hours after Maura. For sure it won't be as good as yesterday. Yesterday was a, a true uh, cross-country day, cross-country flying day. Um, but maybe it allows us to make a little short distance and uh, we want to, to go back in the mountains, so it's, it, it's easier in the mountains to be protected of the wind, to, to find uh, more thermals, it's, it's easier in the mountains. And... But to get there, he first has to face one of the most daunting stages of the race, the flight over Lake Garda. It's touch and go whether he can make it. Il est en radio, là, il allume sa radio. Enough. 
Argentinian Claudio Heidel Schemberger has endured an unplanned night in the open, foot pain and disappointing flights, and is eliminated. Kriegel Maurer is a master strategist and known for his meticulous approach to planning and equipment. But the Red Bull X Alps can take a heavy toll on gear. He uses a rare brake to fix some lines on his glider. Yeah, I broke a line yesterday and knotted it like this as a quick fix. And when it's knotted, it's not as strong and is too short. So when I have time, like now, at a launch site, I change it for a new, perfect one, so that everything fits. The gliders are specially designed for the Red Bull X Alps and are extra light, typically weighing less than five kilo, yet extremely robust. Good. Schönen Tag. They need to be. Paul Guschelbauer wants to reach Monte Baldo in the air. It would be great um, if I could make it there today with an early start. flight. It's still only 8.30. Czech athlete Stanislav Meyer is in the chaser pack and waiting in the wings to move up the rankings. And he'll be there just as soon as anyone makes a mistake. At the head of this group is Benoit Utez and he launches Destination Monte Baldo. Then it's Meyer's turn. Paul Guschelbauer lands out of nowhere on the flanks of the peak. while Benoit Utez lands closer to the lake and now has to climb 2,000 meters to the top. He wastes no time and is straight back on it. This morning I can find a better takeoff than Paul and I find a good Meanwhile, further back, it's an emotional moment for Thomas Cockenair as he tags turn point four in bad weather and just seconds before the mandatory rest period begins. You are my help. <laughs> I love you, everybody. For the race, no, it's finished now. <laughs> it's finished in Monaco. <laughs> Maura is up early and on the move. Pal Takats makes it to turn point five in third place after pulling a lead lenser night pass, while Uters is fourth. They are the direct challengers behind Petio. I think it's possible to, to go to this mountain to find a good takeoff for today and fly. <laughs> Let's go for Matterhorn. <laughs> Uters gets on his way with Maurer and the Matterhorn in his sights. But he is not the only one hunting. The chaser pack storms through in quick succession. Stanislav Meyer, 
Manuel Nubel and Paul Guschelbauer. Each one a podium contender. And not far behind is Ferdinand van Schelven, but he's so exhausted he can barely string a sentence together. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm really tired. I don't have, I, I don't have a lot of, a lot of things to have. I can't even speak anymore. Kriegel Mara launches. It is vital that he makes some distance in the air before a bad weather system rolls in. But can he do it? He sets off in the direction of the Matterhorn and passes Lake Como, landing near Lugano. <laughs> Meanwhile, at the back of the field, Athletes are enjoying the adventure, like Che Golas, who's come all the way from Australia. Or seasoned adventurer, Gavin McClurg. Yeah, this is like the perfect game. I dig it. I love it. Petio's day seven starts well. Having almost closed the gap on Kriegel Mara the previous day, he launches with every hope that he can catch him. It's far from impossible, and Mara is looking vulnerable. Can the Frenchman do what no athlete has done in eight years? and take the fight to Mara? On live tracking, it looks like a head-to-head -head battle is about to begin. Kriegel is forced to land as the bad weather front comes in, while Petio is able to continue in the air. For a moment, it looks as though the stage is set for an epic duel at the front. But then the fates turn against Petio. He has a bad landing and is out. It was not a really complicated landing, but uh, there was this, this wall on my right side. And uh, just, just at the end, when I was about to touch the ground, a, like a thermal bubble smashed me on, the, on this wall. And, and that was it. The dream is over. The physical pain is bad, but it's nothing compared to the psychological pain and sense of what if. No one has come this close to beating Maura and the team's disappointment is palpable. But it's a cautionary reminder that the Red Bull X Alps is still an adventure. To win, you first have to finish. Pal Takats is on a mission to make Lake Como to sit out a 48-hour time penalty for infringing airspace. He runs the last 20 kilometers in just two hours. You know, wouldn't bother me that much, but since I ended up being quite in the leading pack or in the chasing pack of Kriegel, um, it's a whole new situation. The race leaders now head back into the high mountains of Switzerland with one objective, tagging turn point six, the Matterhorn. Athletes like Manuel Nubel and Ferdinand van Schelven are still looking strong and in contention. Like all athletes, Thomas Cochonaire is now feeling the effects of the race and he perseveres in the middle of the pack. He may not be able to keep up with the race leaders, but his determination shows no sign of slacking off. Due to bad weather, Kriegel Mara is forced to hike up the flanks of the Matterhorn. He finally tags the turn point six days, 19 hours and 41 minutes after setting off from Salzburg. One of the hardest sections of the route is now over and he has a comfortable lead, but with 248 kilometers still to go to Monaco, he can't afford to rest. This race is far from over. Um, Regarding my lead, I'm still relatively cautious. It's approximately 100 kilometers, but that is now plus minus one day, maybe one and a half. But when you fly, 100 kilometers equals four hours. That means when I'm not able to walk properly because of my knee, and there are 200 kilometers left, and the second and third can fly fast in three or four days, then 100 kilometers is not much of a lead. 
Benoit Uters is now the biggest challenger to Kriegel after Petio's withdrawal and lies in second place. He passes the Swiss border just ahead of Guschelbauer. Uters has also pulled a Ledlenzer night pass. A noted ultra runner, he is Maurer's worst nightmare in these unflyable conditions. So I took the lead sensor night pass today for go to a refuge, uh, Lanti Saint Emilio, uh, at uh, 2,100 meters, and for go to the pass tomorrow morning and glide to Matterhorn. The way ahead goes through high alpine terrain. The difficulty of this year's route and the bad weather has left their mark on Maurer. He battles on, fighting the knee pain that makes walking on the flat challenging. His only hope of salvation is to get in the air, and there's no chance of that happening anytime soon. The chaser pack is headed by Uters. Further back lies Manuel Nubel, who spent the previous night being treated for exhaustion. There's also Pascal Purin and Stanislav Meyer, both of whom are enjoying a great performance in this race. And as Maurer fights metre for metre, his tormentors also have to land before making the Matterhorn, like Benoit Uters. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's okay for, for a day like this. Uh, the weather was not the best and uh, the guys managed to go a little bit further in the valley, but they landed as well now. So it's not too bad for me. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. It's a bit disappointing, of course, but uh, it's, it's, it's part, of the, part of the race. The weather changes for flying, and at last the Matterhorn can be passed by the chaser group. During the night, Benoit Uters tagged the turnpoint using his Ledlenzer night pass. Simon Oberauner also leaps through the rankings with help of a night pass and is the fourth athlete to pass the iconic mountain just a few kilometers behind Guschelbauer. Pascal Purin is another Austrian with an outside chance for the podium. But third place could go to anyone in this chaser group consisting of Nubel, Van Schelven and Meyer. Uters is on the way to a launch site, but his flight will not be a long one. The weather forces him back down to the ground. Only Paul Guschelbauer can make any kilometers in the air, giving his third place position some much needed protection. With this flight, he destroys any hopes the chaser group may have held about catching him. The following hours are characterized by a last-ditch effort from the remaining athletes 
as almost everyone who has one pulls a lead lens and night pass. Uh, uh, yeah, it would be nice to reach uh, third place for sure, but I think in our position right now we are a little bit uh, out of the fighting for a third place, I think because Paul did a super nice uh, flight in the evening. But tomorrow we are going up there to the takeoff and if the weather is good, if everything is fine, maybe we can somehow fly and uh, do, do the good distance. To make any serious distance, it's crucial that athletes take to the air. But when that's not possible, their only option is to hike. Meyer, Utez, Oberauner, almost all soldier on through the night in a bid to inch their way closer to Monaco. Kriegel Mara prepares for one last effort, to hike to the Col de Denta, a launch site that will put him in striking distance of Monaco. Benoit Utez follows. Paul Guschelbar, meanwhile, is aware of the fight for third place, but ultimately his goal is to make Monaco. He tries to make some distance in the air, and he does. <laughs> Stefan Oberauner and Stanislav Meyer, who were both also eyeing that third place, are handed down penalties for airspace violation ending their hopes. At last, Maura is able to get into the air. There's just 50 kilometers to Monaco over stunning, flyable terrain. Can you hear the and then comes the best view any athlete could wish for, the shining blue waters of the Mediterranean. No one can threaten him now. And he enjoys the last big flight of the race. After hiking and flying for 10 days and 23 hours, Maura reaches turn point seven pay, overlooking the city of Monaco. This is where the clock stops. His fifth victory is secure. Benoit Utez lands two hours later a fitting end to his heroic performance on foot and signs the board in second place. I feel super. The body is tired, but I'm very happy that I did this and stand at the finish for the fifth time and can do the flight now and finish the adventure from the glacier to the sea. I am very happy about this. Uh, this is not it's very, very difficult. Um, I walk an hour, I sleep 20 minutes. I walk an hour, I sleep 20 minutes. And with this strategy, it's difficult to be uh, informed for fly after. And this morning, I am on takeoff and I said, oh, I'm very tired, but I can land here and I'm sweaty. All that remains is the final flight to the finish line in Monaco. Mara takes off first. Then Utez follows for the ceremonial flight to the coast. It is Mara's fifth consecutive victory and he celebrates in some style by diving into the sea. Utez puts in a crowd-pleasing descent. His second place is an extraordinary and emotional achievement, and his family and fans give him the rapturous applause he deserves. Paul Guschelbauer's third place is secure, but it's touch and go if he can make Monaco. Uh, yeah, it is, uh, yeah, now it's the, the last day. 
and I still have about 45 kilometers directly ahead of me. I don't know if I can reach this. It depends. If the thermals are there, and if the north wind is strong, it could go, or not. Sadly, it doesn't, and he's unable to make the turn point in time. But he does make it to the prize-giving ceremony to celebrate his much-deserved third place on the podium alongside Benoit Uterz and Kriegel Maurer. But it's not just the ranking that counts in this race, it's the personal adventure of crossing the Alps. <laughs>